no what mom wants to talk about makeup but I'm going grammar tomorrow sorry um so I'm going grammar tomorrow and I'm going to do a nail nail painting and I don't know if grammar would like that because Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited for today's video. It is one that I get excited to film every year at the beginning of the year and it is going to be my 2020 makeup empties and I am so excited because I used up more makeup than I did last year. Of course, my daughter wants to join. Her school is closed, so yeah. it's been interesting. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> oh, hello. Different outfit, different day. I got through this video, I got about halfway through filming this video yesterday and it was way too chaotic with the dog and the daughter and now my daughter is at grandma's house and we're gonna try again. I really was excited to make this video and just kind of share a lot of the data that I've been accumulating and I felt so rushed yesterday that I was just getting, getting anxiety that I was going to put out a video that I wasn't proud of and this is one I've been really excited to film. So. I don't know where the introduction is versus now, but essentially I'm gonna share with you guys all of the makeup empties that I used up this year. Again, I used up more makeup this year than I did last year. Just to preface, just to preface, my normal makeup consumption in the year of 2020, I still remained working five days a week um, and I went to work. It wasn't like I was working from home. I had no issue with doing a full face of makeup and putting a mask over half my face and you know having my face wear off on my mask. I love doing my makeup. It is, you know, I can only draw stick people. So doing my makeup, even though I'm not great at it, is my way of being creative. I am actually like a very creative person. The execution of my creativity though is just subpar. But I absolutely love doing my makeup. It's my time to just like mindlessly have fun with color, with whatever. So throughout the year, I would say I wore makeup still five to six times every single week. Yes, there were some weeks I wore it less than other weeks, but I was wearing makeup a ton. Sometimes when I film, I will do two to three looks in a day. So I do my makeup a lot. So I understand that I probably use up more makeup than your average consumer in a year. I just want to preface it by saying that. Um, so you kind of have an understanding for how I like how often I use my makeup before we jump into the empties. I'm also really excited because I have my last year's results to share with you versus this year's. Like I said, I used up more dollar value worth of product this year and I also have more makeup empties to share with you this year. I also have each category to compare to last year. So primary use last year versus primary use this year. And I believe that is everything. I want to start by telling you the order of the makeup categories that I actually used the most product up of. So the most used makeup product category for me was actually primer. And I will say I did repurpose a lot of my primer this year. So if something wasn't working for me as an actual primer, I would repurpose it and maybe put like an illuminating primer in a lotion and just use it as an illuminating lotion. Maybe I would use the primer on my body as like a body illuminator. Uh, or if it was a moisturizing primer that I just didn't do enough as, didn't feel like did enough as a primer. Sometimes I would repurpose it and just use it as a moisturizer so I definitely repurposed a lot of primers if you are new to my channel I freaking adore primer it is a makeup step that I actually get excited to use and if I put foundation on my face like if I'm not thinking or if I'm distracted as I start my makeup process and I put makeup or I put foundation on my face before primer I will I will literally take it off and go put primer back on it just feels wrong for me to not put primer on my face. So naturally I love testing new primers and I don't want primers that I don't like to go to waste. I'm also picky with my primers. So that's why I, why I found a lot of ways to repurpose primer this year, which is why you will see I use up a ton of primer this year. My second most used category was actually setting spray. And I think a reason for that is I feel like I was layering on a lot of powders this year to kind of set my makeup down as much as possible in the year of wearing the masks with our makeup. So I went through a lot of setting spray. Mascara was my third most used category, which was actually my most used category of 2019. And I think 
I didn't have as many mascaras open at a time and I've also really well both last year and this year I've really dedicated myself to using mini mascaras over full-size mascaras because I do typically like to have three to four mascaras open at a time because I personally like to layer my mascaras but I will dispose of my mascaras typically every three to four months I will say I got a little lazy this year and maybe used a couple of them like five or six months whereas last year I was very dedicated to that three month mark which is maybe why this category went down a little bit my fourth most used category was lip balm which is crazy I used up more lip balm this year than I did foundation my fifth most used category was lip gloss sixth was foundation seventh concealer eighth powder nine and ten were tied for like random eye products like Stila Glitter and Glows or like liquid liner and that was tied with liner oh that was tied with lipstick and lip liners and then next was brow products and brown bronzer those two categories were tied and then coming in last was blush but I did finish off a blush this year because I finished off a liquid blush can we get a round of applause for me finishing off a blush thank you so much with that being said, let's jump in to each category. We're going to start with primer and my primer category. I used a total of 25 primers this year. Now you'll see some of them are like really mini deluxe size samples, but I went through 25 primers totaling $473.14 worth of primer. And I did this throughout every category where I divided like my total value used by the number of products I used to give me an average cost per primer or per whatever product it is that I used up so that I could kind of see like you'll see with like my setting sprays like I use a lot of setting spray and my average cost per setting spray came to $23.34 and if I'm going to be using up what did I use up for sprays this year 17 sprays in one year maybe it's time I find some less expensive sprays to use. So I did this for my benefit. I will post like numbers over here. So maybe it's a little bit less confusing as I just blurt out numbers to you. But the average cost of each primer that I used came to $18.92. Last year I used up 15 primers. So my primer usage went up by 10 primers this year. Let's get into the primers I used up. Okay, so there are four primers I used up this year that I almost would consider them to be like a primer to a primer, and I'll kind of get into that. So up first, I have the Touch and Soul No Problem Prime Essence. This was just like a priming essence, but it didn't do enough to like prime the skin that I would go over this then with another primer. So it really just felt like an extra step and honestly I wouldn't repurchase this. I got it in a boxy charm. And then I also have the Wander Beauty Glow Ahead Illuminating Face Oil which I kind of considered to be a primer because I used it kind of in the same way as this Prime Essence. But again, I felt like even if this was like a glowier primer, it didn't do enough in terms of what I'm looking for in a primer to be considered a primer. So this was an extra step wouldn't repurchase i felt the same way about the farsali liquid glass i thought this was nice it was beautiful but honestly i just feel like i really don't need this in my makeup collection again it felt like an extra step so i wouldn't repurchase that and then also from touch and soul i finished up the pretty fresh glassy skin balm which i ended up using more as a moisturizer but i've seen people use this as a primer so i considered it in the primer category this was incredibly glowy and i really enjoyed this at one point but towards the end of this and with more consistent use I was like eh this just really isn't for me so this is not something I would repurchase next up I have some primers that I sort of repurposed repurposed into morning moisturizers um so I have these two sample sizes of these Smashbox vitamin glow these were really nice I think that they have vitamin c yes they do have vitamin c in it and the ingredients should be good for your skin but this really did feel more like a gel like moisturizer rather than a primer so it's not something that I was inclined to purchase in a full size because honestly I would rather just use one of my favorite moisturizers rather than use this oh my gosh my entire hair is like my hair just doesn't want to stay in a ponytail um, I kind of felt the same way about the Ula Henriksen Banana Bright Face Primer. I really like this in the beginning. This is really nice and glowy, but it 
doesn't do what I'm looking for a primer to do. It really doesn't smooth the skin out and it really doesn't offer a grip to my makeup. So I really ended up finishing this up by using it more as a moisturizer. It did feel nice and moisturizing on the skin, but not something that I personally would repurchase. Also the Dominique Cosmetics JD Weighty collab just was way too lightweight to be a primer for me. It did nothing in terms of like making my skin feel primed for makeup, but it did feel nice and hydrating. It, this felt more like a skincare item, so I did end up using this in the summertime as a morning moisturizer as well. It was nice and lightweight, so it sunk into the skin really quickly, um, but it's not something I would repurchase. And then something I would consider repurchasing potentially is the Catrice Prime and Friend Fresh It Up Moisturizing Aqua Fresh Hydro Primer. This is really nice and moisturizing. And if you're looking for a hydrating primer, I think this is a really nice, less expensive option than a lot of the more high end or even some drugstore options. I believe this retails for $7.99. The reason I say I may or may not pick this back up is because honestly, I feel like I'm at a good place with my skincare routine that I don't necessarily need a primer that just is hydrating. If it's hydrating and pore filling or if it's hydrating and offers like a tack to the skin, then yes, maybe. But I truly just felt like this was just a hydrating primer so I could just use my moisturizer and didn't have to use this. But... There's that other part of me that feels like I do really enjoy this from time to time, so I could see myself purchasing it, purchasing it again, especially because it is so affordable. So I finished that up. A primer that I ended up repurposing as a body highlighter was the Kaja Dream Puff, Dream Puff Radiant Mousse Primer. This is probably the worst primer I've ever used. I don't know why anyone would consider this a primer even. It was like it was a mousse like consistency but also like thin as air so you would squirt it out it would like explode into this huge bubble of like mousse um and but then you would like pat it down and it would be like it would like instantly disintegrate and then you'd be left with this just like glittery mess so I ended up using this all over my body this summer it worked fine as that but I would not waste my money on this I don't even know if this is still available but I did not think that that was good Towards the beginning of the year, I finally finished off my Amazing Cosmetics Illuminating Primer. I don't know if you can get this anymore. I'm not a huge fan of just illuminating primers anymore. If a primer offers like a dewy glow and is hydrating, then maybe, but just solely like an illuminating primer just is not my jam. So I would not repurchase that even if I could. This Origins Primer, I feel like everyone loves, but I just don't love so much. And I also feel like this has a shorter shelf life. It's the Pore Perfecting Cooling Primer with Willow Herb. I just don't think I like primer in aerosol cans. It's a really interesting texture to then put on your face. This definitely was cooling, but I didn't notice that it really did anything for making my makeup last longer or anything like that. And it is really expensive, so I would not repurchase that. Another primer that I repurposed into a body illuminator, I mixed this in with a lotion. This is the MAC Strobe Cream. I bought this a long time ago. I couldn't find a way to use it that I liked it. And then one of you recommended I just put it in the lotion and I really like it that way. So I'm glad I was able to finish this up using it that way. I also have some minis. I also have some mini primers that I finished up. I had this mini Beauty Blender Opal Essence Primer. This felt super greasy. I would not recommend. I would like literally not touch this with a 10 foot pole. I just was not a fan. It felt super slick on the skin and just really uncomfortable. I also finished up a little mini Too Faced Hangover RX uh, Replenishing Primer. I've used this up in the full size. Not a favorite primer of mine. Not one I would purchase in a full size. And then I also finished up a mini of the Becca First Light Priming Filter. I do really enjoy this primer, but not for $39. If I could get this half off on an Ulta 21 Days of Beauty, I would purchase it for the $19. Because uh, I think it's a really beautiful, it does offer a little bit of illuminating um, and then it also does offer a little bit of like a grip to your makeup. So I think that it serves a purpose. I just don't think it's worth $39, but if I could get it half off, I would buy it at half off. I also finished up the Touch and Soul No Problem Primer. There's like a little bit of product left that I could maybe try and scrape out, but 
I've like tried to reach the edges and really can't get a lot out. So I'm good with calling this good. I have another one of these that I'm currently trying to use up. I used to really enjoy this, but I just have other pore filling primers that I prefer over this at this point. Uh, I've just tried ones I like better. I really like the Ordinary one, and I also really like the First Aid Beauty Pores Be Gone. So when I finish my other one like this, I wouldn't repurchase. I also finished up my second deluxe size of the Milk Hydra Grip Primer. I definitely like this less using the second bottle of this than I did the first time I used it. If you're going for a gripping primer, I honestly would recommend the Urban Decay All Nighter Gripping Primer over this. I just think that one is less finicky and isn't going to ball up or just ruin your makeup like this one sometimes does. So wouldn't repurchase the Milk Hydra Grip. And then I also finished up the Ofra Rays of Light Primer. It feels like years ago that I finished this up makes me like realize how long 2020 really has felt. I completely forgot about this primer. This was supposed to give you sort of like a bronzy effect to the cheeks and honestly I just didn't feel like it really did that. Not a favorite primer, would not repurchase. And then I believe I just have three other primers. The Flower Beauty In Your Prime Illuminating Primer, wouldn't repurchase, not a huge fan of illuminating primers. The Cover Effects Water Cloud Primer, I wasn't a huge fan of either. I got this in a, whoops, I got this in a boxy charm. There it goes. Got it in a boxy charm. Wasn't that impressed. And then I also purchased a mini of the Laura Mercier Pure Canvas Primer towards the beginning of this year. I liked this, and I think if you have oily skin, you would definitely really enjoy this if you are looking for something that is going to be nice and blurring. It was just a little bit heavier and a little bit more drying than I prefer from a smoothing primer. Um, again, I just have a couple others I prefer over this, but if you have oily skin, I think you would really enjoy this. I thought it was a good one, but for me, I just have other ones that work better for my personal skin, skin tone, skin, um, skin things. Yeah. Okay. That's the primer category. All right, moving on to setting spray. I used up 16 setting sprays this year as opposed to 11 last year. So my setting spray usage went up by five, which I could see because I've been, again, using a lot of powder and wanting to spray that and set it in place. A lot of times I like to lock my makeup in and then also add a little bit of a dew. So I, I layer a lot of sprays. Um, when it comes to spray, I used up $372 worth of setting spray for an average total cost of $23.24. So I need to find some more affordable setting sprays. But we'll get into, there was a couple of like really pricey ones that were sent to me via either Octoly or BoxyCharm that I didn't necessarily purchase for myself. So let's go through the setting sprays I used up. So up first, I have these two from Glow Recipe. It's the Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine Mist. I really enjoy this. Would consider purchasing again in the future. My only gripe with this is it has a six month shelf life and I really feel like it doesn't last much longer than these six months. So if you, if you are someone with a large spray collection, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this, but if you are someone who is looking for a really beautiful glowy spray that has a fine mist and isn't going to be something like the Pixie Glow Tonic where you can just end up looking way too glowy, I would recommend this one. This is something I could see myself purchasing again in the future. Um, I don't feel the immediate need to run out and get it. It's still a favorite glowy hydrating mist of mine. I just don't like that it has such a short, short shelf life. I also finished up two of the MAC Fix uh, setting sprays. This is one of my absolute sprays, especially for like in between makeup steps to really melt your powders down and just reset and refresh your face. I used up the coconut one and the lavender one. I don't mind the scented ones, but I would probably just go with the original in the future. Um, the coconut one though, I really do like for the summertime. So I can see myself using this in the summer. I have a little mini right now that I'm still trying to finish up. Uh, setting sprays, I don't have a huge collection, but I also don't like to overwhelm myself with setting sprays. So eventually I will own a large size of this again next year. Uh, this is one of my favorite sprays, something that I feel like I always need to have in my collection, and I finished two of them off this year. I also finished up two Urban Decay All Nighters. I absolutely love this. This is my tried and true go-to if I need my makeup to last longer because I truly do feel like this spray makes a difference. I am currently testing out the Charlotte Tilbury spray that I do feel like makes a difference in making your makeup last longer. However, 
For some reason, there is like a scent memory tied to the way that the Charlotte Tilbury one smells. And it reminds me of like a really hard night of drinking in college. I'm not joking about this. It literally reminds me of like my head resting on a toilet, vomiting into the toilet after a hard night of drinking. There's like a scent memory tied to it. I don't know. I've heard people say it smells like cherry blossoms. I'm like, did I throw up probably McGilly, McGillicuddy's cherry? my like freshman year of college probably but after I finish that spray up I just don't think I can do the Charlotte Tilbury one because it just reminds me of like the porcelain bowl um so I will be using the Urban Decay All Nighter going forward in the future for a long lasting setting spray I also used or tested out tried for the first time three elf sprays this year I have the hydrating coconut mist I could see myself carrying this around in the summer in my purse I like to always have a setting spray in my purse if my like makeup starting to just look like that like you know I like spray my face at my desk I used to use the Mario Badescu but that has so much fragrance now so I don't know this probably has fragrance too but this is something I could see myself carrying around in my bag or beach bag. I like that it smells like coconut for the summer. It's $10. I feel like I flew through this though, but I could see myself repurchasing that. I don't think it really does anything other than makes your skin feel hydrated again, but I could see myself purchasing that again. I also have the Dewy Coconut Setting Mist. This is supposed to be long lasting. Notice no difference with this. <coughs> Wouldn't recommend. And then also I have the Stay All Night Microfine Setting Mist, which is supposed to be a dupe for the Urban Decay All Nighter. I would say the few times that I used this before the spray went all wonky on me, I do feel like this made a difference in making my makeup last longer. But the spray all of a sudden after like three or four uses started being like... That's how it sprayed out. Like I can't even describe. And then I poured it into an empty bottle of my Urban Decay All Nighter and it's still sprayed out that way. So it has to be something with the actual formula of the product instead of the like sprayer. And I would even like give it like a like a shake weight level shake before I would spray it on my face. So I can't recommend this. I'm sorry. Two more affordable sprays I used up this year. The Florence by the Mills Zero Chill Face Mist. This really did nothing. And I believe this is $10 as well. I would just purchase the e.l.f. Hydrating Coconut Mist if you're looking for something to carry in your purse to just hydrate your face. Or honestly, just put water in like a spray bottle. Can you imagine, you know, like the spray bottles that people use to like spray their like leaves on plants? Trust me, I'm not someone who can keep a plant alive, but like I know you're supposed to like spray the leaves or something. Can you imagine if you carried one of those water bottles or those spray bottles? I think you can get them in like the dollar section at Target, maybe they're like three bucks. Um, or the travel section. Can you imagine if you just carried one of those around in your bag with water in it and like sprayed your face? You could. Uh, I also finished up the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Setting Mist. If I'm looking for a less expensive alternative to some of my other mists, I could see myself repurchasing this. I don't think this does miracles by any means, but I do think it's a nice hydrating mist. And based on the average amount that my sprays cost me, I would like to buy more affordable mists for things like just like melting my powders in, even though I will still always own my Mac Fix Plus. Uh, so I could definitely see myself owning this again in the future. Again, I don't think it's mu Miracle Worker, but I do think it's a nice hydrating spray. And then the final three mists, I used up this Power Up Mist by In Beauty Project. I got this in a boxy charm, and I thought this was really, really nice. It offered a really nice glow to the skin, but I believe you can only get this on their website, and I'm too lazy to just order a mist off of a website. If for some, if by some chance this came to like Ulta Beauty, I definitely would order this. It's $32 expensive, but I thought it was worth it. I don't know. I really liked this spray. I was pleasantly surprised by that. A spray I really did not like was the Cover Effects Illuminating Setting Spray. I ended up spraying this on my body to give my body glow in the summer because all this is is glitter in a bottle. You know for Halloween when you can get like the aerosol cans where you spray glitter on your hair? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? I feel like that's what this is yeah just this is not good and then finally i finished up the Caudalie beauty elixir i got this sent to me through octoly and thank goodness because this is super expensive it's like 49.50 
I can't imagine spending $50 on this beauty elixir. It has this like menthol-y feel to it and it was fine. I ended up mostly using this as a priming spray. Like I would spray this on my face in the morning before putting makeup on. But like, this is just like so un unnecessary that I, I just can't justify recommending this or rebuying this for $50. So that is part of why the average cost was so high, but uh, yeah, I would not rebuy this. Next up, we're gonna go through my powder. So my powder category is the highest in terms of the average cost per powder. So I used up five powders this year for a total of $128.99, putting the average cost of each powder at $25.78. Last year I used up five powders, this year I used up five powders, so that remained consistent. Now let's go through those powders. Oh, I just realized I forgot to mention that I finished up the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer this year. This is only $8 and I honestly didn't think I liked this, but now that I don't have it in my collection, anymore I kind of miss it and could see myself repurchasing this I thought this was a good primer because it doesn't pill it is a nice job of smoothing and you can layer it with other primers and I've never had an issue with it pilling so that was another primer I used up this year all right here are the five powders I used up this year so the least expensive was the essence all about matte fixing compact powder I wasn't a huge fan of this and the packaging is always so cheap on these that it breaks I wouldn't repurchase I would spend a few extra dollars to get a nicer pressed powder I also finished up the Ciate London Everyday Vacay Powder. I felt like this powder went really, really quickly. I was like, if I remember correctly, it smelled like coconuts, but maybe it was the spray. Oh, I realized I missed a spray. I also finished up the uh, Ciate London Everyday Vacay Spray. This was fine, nothing special, wouldn't repurchase. And I feel the same way about the powder. Like it was fine. Uh, it wasn't something that looked super flat on the skin, but it was nothing special that would make me want to repurchase it. I have other favorite powders over that. Speaking of favorite powders, I would consider these three to be my three favorite loose powders. So up first, I have the Too Faced Born This Way Ethereal Setting Powder. I do still have, or I do have another one of these currently in my collection. I really like this powder because it is heavier in a sense that it is gonna do a really nice job of locking your makeup into place, but it isn't such a flat powder that it is going to look super heavy and super cakey on the skin. And it, it, it does, it doesn't have really a luminosity to it, but it isn't going to make your face look like it's dead or just completely flat. So I really enjoy this one from Too Faced. I definitely recommend that one. You guys know I fell in love with the Glossier Wouter this year. I have another one of these currently in my collection. I love that this is so lightweight, uh, but still does a nice job of locking your powder into place without looking heavy at all. And then the Hourglass Translucent Veil Powder I think is amazing. I eventually will repurchase this. Um, I just haven't gotten around to it. I wanna use up some other powders before repurchasing, but this is another one that is really nice because it does offer just like a little bit of life to the skin in a powder, whereas there are just some other powders that just like completely suck the life out of your face so those were the powders that I used up all right you guys moving on to the foundation category I did use up eight foundations last year or no sorry eight foundations this year last year I used up 14 foundations now I did bring quite a few foundations into my collection this year so that could be part of it. We'll see. I'll be very inter interested to see how much foundation I end up using up next year. Uh, my total value for foundation use up was $197.95. This led to an average of $24.74. I will say a lot of the foundations that I finished up this year were drugstore foundations. And I feel like my drugstore foundation collection is dwindling. If you guys have any good drugstore foundation recommendations that you would like to see me try in the new year, let me know. You guys know I still love my L'Oreal Pro Glow and Pro Matte, although I haven't been reaching for the Pro Glow as much as I used to, um, but that's beside the point. Let's get into the foundations I finished up. So speaking of L'Oreal, I did finish up one of the L'Oreal Pro Mattes. I honestly don't even remember finishing this up. This had to have been at the very beginning of this year. I do really enjoy this foundation and feel like I will own this again. I really enjoy mixing this with the L'Oreal pro glow because this one has a little bit more lasting power and those two mixed together are just like so perfect i also finished up the l'oreal infallible 24 hour fresh wear i'm not a huge fan of this i know so many people are but this wouldn't be a repurchase for me 
Another foundation that wouldn't be a repurchase. If you guys are not new to my channel, you know how much I despise this Wander Beauty. New to Loser Foundation. This was painful to finish off. It went on forever. But alas, I finally finished this off and I'm so glad to move this out of my collection. This just added so much texture to my skin that I didn't even know my skin had. It like made my pores look larger than I felt like they were and it just was not cute. So this wouldn't be a rebuy for me. Uh, speaking of drugstore, I also finished up the Physicians Formula Healthy Foundation. I took the stopper out of this, or I thought I did. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. I've scraped everything I can out of this. Could I maybe get one or two more uses out of this? Probably. But, like, if you look at this up to the light, like, I, there's, like, no product left in here. And I'm perfectly fine with calling this empty. So I finished that up. I also finished up the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Elixir Foundation, which has been discontinued and you can no longer get. I went through three or four of these. I used to love this. It was a little bit heavier than I remember as I was finishing this up. So honestly, I'm not too mad that I can't get this anymore because I don't think I would have repurchased it. The final drugstore foundation I finished off was the Revlon Candid Photo Ready. I thought this was a beautiful foundation with no lasting power. So wouldn't repurchase. If this lasted a good eight, nine hours, yes, I would repurchase because I think it has the most beautiful finish ever, but it just starts to wear off your face so quickly. Even set with a powder or with a gripping primer, this just doesn't work. So that's super unfortunate because I really did enjoy that. The YSL All in One Glow, I liked this. The more I used it, the more I was like, I don't think I'll repurchase this. I think it's pretty, but I don't think I will repurchase. I have other formulas similar to this that I prefer over this, and I also love my uh, YSL Radiance Awakening. That's one I will repurchase, and I wanna try the YSL All Hours. So honestly, this one just gets the boot. I'm glad I finished it up though. That one was a pricey one. And then I also finished up the uh, Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer. This was the illuminating version, which I believe was discontinued. I know that the original Tinted Moisturizer was like repackaged. I don't know if it was reformulated. I do have the new one, um, but I was happy to finish this off. This was beautiful, one of my absolute favorite tinted moisturizers. It makes me really sad that I don't think I can get the illuminating version anymore because it offered the most beautiful glow to the skin. Um, but yeah, I can't get this anymore. So this one is gone. All right, let's move on to concealer. I used up six concealers this year. Last year I used up seven. Um, some of the concealers I finished this year had a lot of product in them. My total uh, concealer dollar value usage was $148.99 putting me at an average cost of $21.28. Uh, so let's quickly go through. I feel like this video is getting really long, so I'm gonna try and be quick. The Tarte Shape Tape finally finished off. Didn't like this, wouldn't repurchase. Ulta Beauty Full Coverage, I've gone through three of these. However, you fly through this because there's so little product. I think there's better concealers on the market. Like any drugstore concealer, there's a lot of good drugstore concealers out there. I would just recommend like the Milani, um, just, I wouldn't repurchase that one anymore. The Jouer, I feel like I flew through this. I liked this one and would consider repurchasing this one again, but I feel like I flew through this one. So I don't know. I do kind of miss this one though. That would be a repurchase. This one I do miss. Even though I like my Kosas just a little bit more than the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion, I think the two are really similar. I miss having this. I think because I love my shade match on this one. I have the shade 1N. So this is something that I do plan to repurchase in the future. I just want to finish up a couple of my other concealers that I won't replace. But I definitely would repurchase that. The Flower Beauty Concealer wasn't a fan of. I, this, I felt like this burned my under eyes. And the Doe Foot was like so pointed that it would like scrape underneath your eyeball. So I wasn't a huge fan of this. And then I also wasn't a huge fan of the Josie Mayron Vibrancy Concealer. So this would not be a repurchase either. I thought I used up the Smashbox 24 hour concealer. I don't know where it is, but thought I used that up too. I did use up the uh, Smashbox 24 hour. Wouldn't recommend, wouldn't repurchase. Goodbye. Oh, I just found this little Benefit Professional. I also used up very many little hate one of the worst primers in my opinion. Wouldn't recommend a repurchase. All right, you guys, we're kind of nearing the end. On the mascara, I used up 14 mascaras for a total of $162.98. Average cost $11.64. Last year, I used up 17 mascaras, so I did use up three less mascaras this year. I'm just gonna run through these so, so, so quickly. Um, ones that I wouldn't repurchase, the Tarte Gifted, didn't think was that good. 
Butter, Butter London Power Up was okay, but wouldn't repurchase. Siate London Wonder Wand wasn't that I wasn't that big of a fan of. Smashbox Full Exposure Mascara really did not enjoy. Uh, Tarte's Pro not a huge fan of that. Uh, the Tarte Surfer Curl was okay, but wouldn't repurchase. And then the Too Faced Damn Girl was fine, but not something I would repurchase. It was a very clumpy formula, like everyone says. My favorite mascara discover of this year was the Ilia Beauty Limitless Mascara. This is a phenomenal mascara, highly recommend. I went through many, this is something I will absolutely own in the future. This is by far my favorite mascara I think I've ever tried. And then with that, I also, you guys know, I've mentioned this many times in my past, I love the NARS Climax Mascara as well as the Milk Kush Mascara. These three are like the perfect trifecta. I also finished up the Wander Beauty Unlash Mascara. I think Wander Beauty makes really good mascaras. I also have their Mile High Club Mascara, which I think is really good. And then, ooh, the CoverGirl Ex Exhibitionist Mascara. I was not a fan like everyone else. This is like an overhyped product in my opinion. It's fine, but not a favorite. And then I also really enjoyed the Tarte, Keep, not Tarte, Elf Keep Your Curl Mascara. This is a tubing mascara. This will not budge. So if you have issues with transfer, highly recommend this one. I absolutely will repurchase. I think it's like $4. And then the L'Oreal uh, Voluminous Carbon Black has been a tried and true staple in my collection for years. So absolutely would recommend and would repurchase this one. Let's just get blush out of the way because this one's super easy. I used one blush up, total $9.99. Last year didn't use any blush up. Go me for finishing a blush. And I finished the Flower Beauty Blush Balm in the shade uh, Pinched. This was a very new neutral blush shade so really easy to layer with other blushes wear on its own whatever it may be I really enjoy this and actually I kind of miss the blush bomb formula I am going to order the flower beauty powder off the Ulta website and I might order a couple more blush bombs because why the heck not I only used up two bronzers this year. Last year I used up four. My goal is to use up at least a full size bronzer in the coming year and use up more than two bronzers. So I finished up a mini of the Tarte Park Avenue Princess Bronzer. This was really beautiful, but I don't think I would repurchase. I just have others that I prefer over this. And then I also finished up the Ulta Beauty Face Sculpting Stick. Wouldn't repurchase just because I have other cream bronzers I prefer over this. I've been loving the Tarte the blue one tart sea breezy is that what it is i love that one and i also love the milk makeup you guys know that my total amount used up for bronzer was 24 dollars for an average cost of 12 dollars. i know i typically spend more than 12 dollars on bronzer lip gloss i used up eight lip glosses for a total of 76 dollars and 25 cents putting my average cost at nine dollars and 53 cents Last year, I only used up five glosses, so I did go up in this category, which is really exciting. I used up two of the Kopari lip glossies. I love these. I would just recommend the clear. This is a nice nourishing lip gloss, but I just think the clear is the best route to go. I would and will continue to repurchase that. I also finished up two Fenty Beauty mini gloss bombs in hot chocolate and fussy. I'm hoping to finish off more mini gloss bombs this year. One of my favorite uh, gloss formulas. You guys know that. I also finished off my Bite Beauty French Press Lip Gloss in Flat White. I actually have a backup of this that I still need to use up. I love this, but you can't get it anymore. I also finished up a mini Dose of Colors Lip Gloss that I got in a holiday set a couple of years ago. The sticker came off. I don't even know the shade. Um, I finished off a little mini Tower 28 Lip Jelly. I absolutely love this. And then a little mini of the Urban Decay Hi-Fi Shine Lip Gloss in SPL which I think is beautiful, but a little bit gritty and wouldn't repurchase. You guys know I love the Tower 28, would recommend. For lipstick and lip, lip liner, I put these in the same category. I used up three for a total of $32.83. Last year, I only used up one in this category. Uh, and this puts my average cost at $10.94. I did finish up the Dose of Colors uh, lip liner. Wouldn't recommend this was really dry. And the only reason I got through this is because mine kept breaking when I was trying to use it. So like half of my product went to waste. I also finished up the Balm Jour Creamy Lip Stain. I think this is a bomb formula and I absolutely would purchase more of these. They're so hydrating and it's like they stain the lips but are, but don't dry the lips out. I just, I love this formula from the Balm. And then I also finished up a mini lipstick from Marc Jacobs in Slow Burn. This took me forever. It was a beautiful shade but I'm so excited that I finished off another mini lipstick. For eye products, I have 
three for a total of $54 and 33 cents. 18 11 is the average product cost. I have a mini Stila glitter and glow, a large Stila glitter and glow would not recommend these. They dry out way too quick. The only one I would recommend is Perlina. It's so beautiful. You can top it on any look and it will just amp up a look. Um, but these are not something I will continue to purchase in the future except for Perlina. And I finished an eyeliner off this year. I finished off the milk makeup eyeliner in the shade bonus. There's not a lot of product in this, so this goes really quickly. I really like the milk eyeliner formula. I think it's really nice, especially for the waterline. It stays all day, but the essence eyeliners are $2.99. So you could just buy that. I did finish up two brow products for a total of $40. Uh, last year I used up four brow products. So we went down in brows. I finished up the Milk Kush Brow Gel, which I do really like, but this is really pigmented. So I could see a lot of people not liking this. I will repurchase this in the future. I just have other brow products to get through before I repurchase. And then from the Brow Gal, I finished up the Instant Brow Hair Tinted Brow Gel. I really like this, but this is harder to get. And it's $22, so I feel like I don't necessarily need it. Like, I can just use the Glossier Boy Brow and be just as happy. So this is not something I would repurchase. If I did not say my total for this was $40, which would put the average cost at $20 per brow product. Usually I just use a powder in my brows, so there's that. All right, and then we are gonna end with lip balms. I finished up 10 lip balms. You guys know I'm a lip balm loving gal. My total used for lip balms was $156.33 putting me at an average of $15.60. I used up 10 lip balms last year, so exactly the same amount. Let's quickly go through these. I finished up two of the Milk Kush lip balms in Bubble and Catatonic. These are fine. Um, I like that they have a bit of a tint to them, but I don't feel like they do anything for nourishing the lips. And I honestly just need a little bit more from my lip balm, so I don't think I would purchase these in the future. I also finished up the Pharmacy Honey Butter Lip Balm. This retails for $10. Highly recommend. This is so hydrating. This is like chapstick on speed. It's so nice. Definitely will be repurchasing this. Something I wouldn't repurchase is the Tatcha Kisu Lip Mask. I use this as a lip balm because it had like a little bit of a pink tint to it. So it was really pretty, but it's like glorified Vaseline and not worth the $28 price tag in my opinion. I also don't really love the Junk Elephant Lippy Balm. It's the size of a glue stick and really hard to use to like be precise on your lips. So I wouldn't repurchase. I also didn't feel like it was super nourishing to the lips. I feel like this is an unpopular opinion, but I don't think the Fenty Pro Kisser Luscious Lip Balm is all that nourishing to the lips. So I felt like this dried my lips out and I wouldn't repurchase this. I also am not a huge fan of the Ilia Balmy Gloss. I feel like this dried my lips out. So would not purchase that in a full size. Thankfully, I got to try that as a tester. I was also really disappointed in the Glow Recipe Lip Pop. This is like an exfoliating lip balm, very gently, lightly exfoliating, but also does not feel nourishing on the lips at all. So wouldn't repurchase that. I finished up a mini Sugar Rose Tinted Lip Treatment. I do love the French... Uh, I do love the fresh lip treatments, but... uh. I really like the original the best. So that's the one I would personally repurchase. And I was a huge, huge fan of the Huda Beauty Silky Lip Balm. Absolutely would repurchase this in a full size. It was so nourishing on the lips. This just like felt like luxury on the lips. I was not expecting to love this as much as I did, but I thought that this was really, really good. Woo! All right, guys. I need a breath. I would have mentioned the drink of the day, but I finished it. It was a caribou French press, cold press. What do they call that caribou? Is it a French press? No, cold press. Cold press with white chocolate. Might need to go get a second. Re up of that. It's the 23rd and when my husband gets home, we have literally all of our Christmas shopping to do tonight. I need to put some lip gloss on at the thought of that. Okay, 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 okay. You guys are probably wondering, girlfriend, how many makeup products did you actually use up? Because it is not our job to be adding along as you go. And I am so stinking excited to say that I used up 104 makeup products this year. I have 104 makeup empties. 
which just makes me so happy because I know I have a large makeup collection that makes me feel overwhelmed at times but then when I look at all the stuff that I still actually did use up I'm like okay like nice job girl like you definitely don't need to bring in all the makeup that you bring in but at least you still finish products off so I'm so excited about that and then my total dollar value used up this year is one thousand eight hundred seventy seven dollars and seventy five cents so i did miss the two thousand dollar mark but my goal this year was just to use up one thousand seven hundred and fifty so i exceeded my goal by over a hundred bucks which i'm really excited about meaning next year i'm going to give myself that lofty goal to do reverse rouge twice and use up two thousand dollars worth of products that will be the goal i'm a little bit nervous because i feel like i'm not really close to finishing anything up but we'll see how it goes Anyway, you guys, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. I hope this is not over an hour long. Thank you to anyone who stuck around until the very end to watch this video. I would love to hear how many makeup products you finished off this year if you know. Um, other than that, thank you so much for sticking around to watch today's video and for supporting my channel. I love you guys so much, and I will catch you in tomorrow's video. Bye.